I just want to give you um, a word to encourage you, but then also uh, to help you when it comes to having a hope, when it comes to um, also getting a new perspective on the situation, your personal situation, or even what the situation is in the world, okay? So in Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 through 19, and then also 23 through 26, there's a story about a ruler who has a daughter, and the daughter dies. And so he asked Jesus to come to his house to heal his daughter. And so he goes, Jesus goes to the house, and the disciples go with him and then when Jesus in verse 23 when Jesus gets to the house he walks in and he sees that there's a whole lot of people in there and they're making a lot of noise that's what the scripture says that they're making a lot of noise and so what I want to focus on is that that uh, when we're going through personal tests and trials okay uh, when we're going through situations and circumstances even as we're going through this stuff now in, in the world everybody seems to be going through this stuff in the world there is a lot of noise People are allowing their souls, their mindset, their way of thinking, how they feel about something, how they perceive something, how they take in information, how they see things. They're allowing that to cause them to have a lot of thought and opinion and express okay, what you're feeling, what you're thinking, and what's going on. And you may doing that, you may not do that necessarily when it comes to the whole virus situation, but maybe you're just looking at your own personal life and how that, the, how the, the shutdown of everything, the quarantine of everything, how that is affecting you financially, how it's affecting you in your family life, how it's affecting you in your own mental state. Uh, they're saying that there's a lot of people that are just uh, dealing with more depression, more anxiety, just being quarantined. So you may have certain things that uh, that just that are a lot of noise, a lot of external noise, but also a lot of internal noise. Okay, in our soul. And so what Jesus tells them when he gets to this house, he tells them in verse 24, he says, "Give place." And what he's saying is, "Give place to him." Why? And then he says further that uh, she's not dead, but she sleeps. So God is saying, I'm giving you a perspective. I'm giving you a word of what I want to do in your life. I, I'm trying to tell you what his, my perspective is, what the Lord is saying. But you got to give place to him. You have to quiet all the noise that's in your soul. You have to quiet all that, that uh, what you thought you believed, what you, how all these feelings, all the fears, the angers, the resentments, all the condemnation, the criticism, the judgment that you're giving out to other people or even to yourself. You have to, or the, um, the feeling of hopelessness that you have based on your situation because you don't see another answer. You don't see a way of escape in a sense. So you're all in a turmoil uh, in your soul. And so what he's saying is you got to give place to me. You have to quiet all that down. Why? Because I got another perspective. It may look like, and for him, see, now they could have thought that, oh, he's just jesting, you know, like, oh, he's just joking around. But then the, also it can look like uh, he's not taking it seriously, that, that he's not taking what's, what's happened seriously. Like, this, she's died. He's not taking it seriously. But he's saying, no. See, when we're talking about wanting God to move in our situations and our circumstances, God, is he, he sees it differently than we do. He always sees the way of escape. He always knows uh, what the next step is. But he, he sees it differently. And see, what we have a tendency to do is look at him back. He's telling us what, he, what we need to see and how, how he's seeing it. But then we end up telling him, we, they laughed him to scorn like they just wouldn't stop you know they laughed him to scorn more noise and so what, what does that mean for us that yes we could we could start saying no that, that uh, we can get offended by what God is saying and then what we're doing is we're missing out on what God is saying or what God wants to do because he says here give place to me uh, the maid is not dead but she sleeps and then they laughed him to scorn and in verse 25 once they put the people out he was able to raise her up so once you begin to quiet your soul once you begin to submit yourself, James 4 and 7, submit yourself to God, yield yourself to God, yield those, those thoughts, yield those emotions, yield yourself to God, humble yourself, humble your soul and say, okay, Lord, I need your perspective. I need your way of thinking. Yes, you could be a person of faith. You could be a person who has the word of God, but if you are allowing your emotions, you're allowing your soul to, to lead you and to get carried away your, what you see, here and feel. If you find yourself judging and condemning others, if you find yourself on a platform just criticizing what everybody else is doing or what's going on, or even complaining about your own personal life, mad about the situation, not necessarily the virus, but just your own personal situation, don't know what, which way to go. If you're, if you're emotionally in an uproar, or, or you could be uh, emotionally uh, depressed, 
having a feeling of indifference. Like, I don't care. I don't care anymore kind of attitude. Well, what God is saying is that, no, you have to give him place. Put your rest in him. Submit yourself to him and resist that temptation to keep following the way that you've been following. And so even as in, in 1 Corinthians 2, how it talks about if you want an eye has not seen nor ear has heard, Neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for us. But it says, people stop there. But it says in verse 10, but God has revealed it, okay, unto us by his spirit. So you can be a person of faith. You could be a person who knows the word of God, but you have to release your faith. You have to submit to faith. It's not enough to know the scriptures in your, in your head. We got to get those scriptures out of our head and into our hearts. We have to get that, that uh, revelation that God gave us out of our head and into our hearts. We have to submit to what God's word is saying. We have to submit to that revelation or that perspective that God is giving you concerning your business, concerning your marriage, concerning your health. It, but if we're going to focus on the report of the world, you know, no matter where it's coming from, if we're going to focus on the report of the world or the opinions of others, we're going to miss out on what God has because we're not going to connect our faith with that word. We're not going to mix our faith with that word and it will not profit us. No matter how much word we have, no matter how much faith we have, you don't need a whole lot of faith to get a whole lot done. But if I'm not going to focus on what God is telling me, if I'm going to focus on everything else but him and his word, excusing it, reasoning it away, justifying it, then I'm going to miss out on what he wants to show me. And then when he shows me, if I don't submit to it and yield myself to it, I'm not going to see it manifest in my life. And so he says he's revealed it to us unto, unto us by his spirit. For the uh, spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Um, verse 14 says of that, but the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What God wants to show you, God's perspective is spiritually discerned. You want the supernatural hand of God to move in your life. You want to see the prophetic word come to pass. You want to see the promises manifest. You said, well, I've given my tithes. I've given my offerings. I pray. I fast. I've gone to church. Lord, I'm a good person. I mean, you can do all this stuff. And God is saying, but are you standing on my word? Are you standing on my word? Are you seeking my face? Or are you kind of going with the flow of what everyone else is going with? Are you focused more on the problem? Problem. Are you focused more on the situation? He's not minimizing your problem. He's not minimizing the situation. He's not minimizing your pain. He's not minimizing the need that you have. He's not minimizing the desire that you have. All that matters to God. Everything. You, you matter to God. You are priceless to God. But what he is saying is that I'm not minimizing that. I have an answer. But you got to get in the spirit to get it. You have to be able to yield and submit yourself to receive what he has for you. You have to receive it by his spirit, not, not in an anxious way. So I just want to encourage you with that word. Give place to God. Give place to him. Uh, labor to enter into his rest. Hebrews 4. Labor to enter into his rest. Submit yourself to the Lord. Uh, resist the temptation to keep doing things your way. And submit yourself to God. And you will begin to see what God wants to do in your life. It will be tempting to have these conversations about stuff and what people are doing, what they're not doing, how people are not listening, or whatever. It may be tempting to do that. It may be tempting to focus on the problem, the pain in your body, uh, the situation in your home. It may be tempting to look at your bank account and just say, mm -mm, God is not doing something. And you, you know, get focused on that. And God is saying, no, I'm give me place. I'm trying to show you my perspective. She's not dead. She's asleep. You're not broke. You're rich. You're not sick. You're healed. By Jesus' stripes, you were healed. God supplies all your need according to his riches and glory. He says, I will give you the way out, the way of escape. But we have to give him place. So I just want to encourage you. Let me just uh, pray with you for a moment. Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank you and we praise you for your word. For your word is life. Your word is strength. And we thank you, Lord God, that even those who are <clears throat> in need of healing on today, Father, we just thank you for the healing power of your word. For you sent your word to heal us and to deliver us from all our destructions. Lord God, we thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you right now for hearing our prayers. We thank you, Lord God, for answering our prayers. Help us, Lord God, to submit ourselves unto you. Help us to receive Resist the devil and he flee from us. Lord, we thank you right now for giving us your perspective on our, on our situation. We thank you right now, Lord God, that we resist that temptation, Lord God, uh, to follow the
the flow of the world. We resist that temptation to follow the flow of this flesh and the carnality, the way we used to handle things. Father, this is a new day for us. And we thank you right now, Lord God, that we see what you are showing us. We see and we hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.